I went to chat GDT. I said, hey, go and read reviews across the internet. Make me a listicle that outlines the top benefits people have when drinking coffee. And so it made you know, five reasons why. Then I said, now write this as if I'm a Trump supporter. It was like, it's a non-pharmaceutical way to get energy. It's not controlled by one company. There's a lot of different companies to choose from. And then you say, you know, okay, now write this as if I'm a Biden fan. And it'll say coffee is a natural alternative to blah, blah, blah. You get much happier. There's mental health benefits, all this and that. And so I started like kind of putting together pages and just basically testing them against each other. Surprisingly, the Trump version of copy had like a two times higher click through rate than the Biden version of copy from chat GPT. Welcome to Down to Chat, a inside look on what happens behind the scenes of a fast growing consumer brand. All the stuff you don't hear outside all the stuff you you would hear in the conference room displayed here live from Cody and Eli every week, only if you subscribe. This is a conversation where two landing page folks are going to be talking about all things landing page and I'm the novice in the room so I can ask all the silly questions that the internet wants to know. And it'll be a little, a little masterclass, if you will. Let's do it. Amazing. All right, no intros. If you don't know who Nick is, can't really help you at this point. Let's get straight into landing pages. So Nick, you're kind of known as like the landing page guy. You talk about it. You've got an amazing company, Hooks, that is pretty much all the company does. And, you know, you've done a landing page for us that has crushed it. I've seen a lot of the pages you've done. So really just want to get into it super quickly. I'm sure you've chatted about this stuff in other places, but why landing pages? Why do brands need to use them? And what kinds of landing pages? Let's just start with that. So it's been a hard year for e-commerce brands. And, you know, one thing that we've all been focusing on a lot more, certainly us at Jones Road have been focused on a lot, is retention specifically owned audiences, what are you doing to provide the best possible customer experience and getting as much value and revenue as you can out of your existing customer cohorts? And an amazing way to do that is with an owned app using Tapcart. I truly believe, you know, a few years ago when everyone was starting, you know, SMS programs, was, I really didn't think that brands needed to, you know, have an SMS program. And, you know, I kind of feel the same about apps. At first, I wasn't really sure. I thought a website was fine. But honestly, since, since learning about Tapcart and seeing how great it is, I've actually become a believer. And I really believe that for most brands, having an app as a part of their retention tech stack for owned audiences is such a great idea. So what I want to do is just show you guys a little bit of the inside of Tapcart. I just show you what it looks like, preview the app for you, and just kind of walk you through how easy it is to use it. It's super cool. Before I got started with Tapcart, I thought that I really didn't know much about an app, but I figured it would take a ton of time, be super expensive to develop, thought you needed your own developers. But it's actually super simple. Tapcart set up this app for us in about a week. They do all of the design. They pretty much make it just so easy. So all you have to do, if you can plug and play and, and drag and drop, just like a landing page builder, you can get an app going for your store pretty instantly, you know, in a matter of weeks at the very most, sometimes within a week. So I just want to kind of show you guys the app. I mean, look at it. It looks just like our website. It's pretty awesome. You can have, you know, your nav, you have your logo in here, you have a cart. You can, again, it's, look how easy it is just to edit the content. You can just, you know, change your images, change where it goes to, change the section. They've just got a bunch of these sections that you can kind of just put in there, especially if you want to do something. You know, an app is a great time, you know, to offer uh, a great place to offer promos, exclusive things to your existing customers. You can put in here, you know, look how easy this is just to drag and drop, right? Like I said, if I can do it, anyone can. Just drag and drop, edit the content, remove it. You can change your, you know, your font. But yes, yeah, it's, it's a great time. It's a great place to offer promos. So you can definitely kind of make use of, of some of this existing content. Uh, just kind of drag and drop some of these blocks in when you want. You can have videos in here, so it's great for content, exclusive content for for your customers. Again, it looks just like our website. They were able to match it pretty perfectly. But you know, one of the benefits is because it's an app, it loads super quickly. So yeah, again, you can see kind of how easy it is. You can edit, you know, theme settings in here. You can edit the navigation. It's super cool. They've got some really cool features to to grow your app and your user base. Where you can scan a QR code. So you can you know print or create a QR code that you can use online or anywhere. Direct people to your app if you want to. You know, direct people to to your app to get a discount from your Facebook group, whatever it is. So this is a super cool one uh, that I've seen a lot of brands use really well. You know, you can get a ton of data. Uh, you know, another thing I love is push notifications. So again, we're all trying to reach customers where, you know, ads are expensive, CPMs are up, 
it's getting harder to track. So we're all trying to reach places and email is great. SMS is great, but, it, but it, you know, there's a cost to it. The cool thing about a push notification is there's no additional cost to send a push notification. So just like you're going to set, set up, you know, I'll, I'll show you exactly how to do it. Just like you're going to set up a text, you can set up a push notification just as easily, but with a text, there's a cost every time you send it out. And if your brand's growing, that can, that can definitely add up with a push notification. There's no incremental cost. So you can set up, you know, based on a product, you can do it based on a collection, uh, so again, I think that this is super cool. You can do it based on a collection. You just write your copy in here. It's super easy. Change some settings. You can schedule it. It's awesome. It's super cool. Uh, it's a great way just, again, to be able to kind of another way to reach your customers without an additional cost. The great thing is, right, it takes up it takes up the screen. You can even make these full screen and there's no additional cost. You know, if I, if I haven't said that already, I love it. I think it's super cool. Like I said, I think nearly everybody should consider having an app. And the best part is if you go to uh, tapcart.com slash down to chat, you can actually get up to two months free. Go to tapcart.com slash down to chat. You can see this amazing landing page that I have. Just fill out your info, book a demo with the Tapcart team. And I highly recommend you do if you're trying to squeeze out more incremental revenue from your existing customers in 2023. Man, so the first time I got into e-commerce was at a, not working with brands that you would think of today. It was working with a lot of published, like media publishers that, um, you know, they were trying to sell like a monthly, uh, there was one specific one. We would drive traffic and the goal was really driving traffic to get page views on the site so that advertisers show their ads. Site visitors basically go through a slideshow or whatever. And then it kind of shifted into, okay, the advertisers aren't paying as well. So we're going to start building a $9 monthly subscription where enthusiasts can come. They can sign up. There's a $50,000 raffle every month. It only costs nine bucks. You get tons of value from, uh, it was in the car space. So like you'd pay nine bucks and you'd get, you know, 30% off a tire brand. You know, just massive discounts that completely outweigh the benefits of, or the, the cost of $9. dollars that was where I first started learning about landing page. In the sense of, okay, how do we actually optimize this thing to drive click through, to drive a purchase? That was my intro. And then I got to a beverage company called Hint, and everything we did there was around landing page. In fact, the site was so bad because it was built on Symphony Commerce. You couldn't really edit anything. You had to, like, submit a ticket just to change the title. We basically built a landing page that we would run all our traffic to them. And, um, and then we'll, when we moved over to Shopify, it was the same thing. We started using Shova and Media Rio. It's like, oh, you know, we can put the product at the top. We can talk about how you use it. We can put social proof in there. We can talk about the benefits. And, you know, we can do it all in one page without somebody having to meet. I also think, like, performance marketing is really easy way to get better at performance marketing is reducing the number of clicks. Every click has drop off. And so if you could reduce the number of clicks with a landing page uh, tremendously, you know, you might lose like four, four extra steps there. And so you retain a lot of the people that come in the first place. So overall, your conversion rate ends up being generally much higher. Um, we've had a lot of hooks clients who, you know, their average conversion rate coming in is like 2%. And when, when they start running our page, they see four to five. And then, you know, we've had like Nori, for example, which is an iron, iron, handheld iron, you know, they had 8.78% conversion rate. Jeez, we had another client. I've seen us. that page. That's a good page. Yeah. We had another client email us on Saturday saying they have a 13.4% conversion rate. Um, and so it's, it's basically like, you know, I, I always think of it. It's the art of how do we create a red carpet experience for somebody random coming in and. You know, how do we basically, instead of like, instead of just dumbing down our product and instead of just discounting our product or adding sayings, how can we actually put enough content there to kind of bring their education level up to where they see the value in the product? Um, and so, yeah. So anyways, we, I, I found landing pages. I realized they work. And then when we started showing the brands, you know, every brand we work with, like landing pages is the first thing we do. It just immediately drops CPA by 30%. And we can always rely on it to be something that just, that works really well. And, uh, and last year we started to get a ton of kind of inbound ball. Hey, can you build us, you know, a landing page for a TikTok launch we're doing, or, you know, we're launching a TV campaign. We need a lander that, you know, speaks to a TV audience differently. 
or um, you know, we're launching a new product in vertical, and so our existing PEPs and whatnot, they just don't work. So can you help us build a page for that? And um, it worked out really well, and so we just decided, okay, well, this is something where there's enough demand and there's enough. You know, everybody needs a landing page. If you're spending a hundred thousand dollars a month and you're not losing any page, um, you're basically, you know, you're not max level a hundred thousand. And so, um, yeah, we ended up spinning it out, and till today, we're still like on a backlog. That's crazy. awesome. That's crazy. So, um, as as kind of a client, like I learned a lot, kind of going through the you know the process with hooks. Can you talk about that really quickly? Like, what what's your process for creating landing pages if a brand's just coming to you? Yeah. So basically we have like a, a call with, um, you know, somebody who runs business development and partnerships for us. And, you know, she's obviously like pushing for people to buy the page, but she's also making sure that they're um, a brand that's kind of the right fit. And so the, the right fit for us is one of a couple of different scenarios. One is like in your case, right? Fast growing brand, spending a bunch on paid social, wants to get landers tested. And you know that you need to get landers tested. Um, you just don't have the bandwidth. And so hiring hooks is much easier because, you know, you can rely on hooks to do the copywriting, the research the strategy, and the UX, the UI, and develop the whole thing. Um, so that's one use case. The other use case is companies where they uh, don't have any capability to build it internally. Like you guys couldn't build it internally if you had all the time. But then there's other companies that aren't the cap- they don't have the capability. And so hooks is just an easy solution for somebody like Crocs to say, all right, we know we need to build this, we're just going to hire this team to build it. Um, and then you have other other instances where, um, you know, I'd say the majority of people are in one of those. But then, of course, we have outliers, you know, companies like a UNICEF, for example. They just need something up by a certain date and they know they can go on us. Or you have a new founder who's never built a site or doesn't have the design shop or the ability to go build something nice and, and clean. And so they can just hire folks and, you know, in three weeks, so I'm a beautiful page up and ready to go. One question. So for me being a novice, so if you, essentially brand starts tomorrow, they can either drive all their traffic to a PDP um, and then a customer will kind of go to the PDP, then go to our story or our stance, our science, and then read a, our press page. So essentially this is the the beauty of a landing page is it's everything in one page. You can kind of s- click that link in the ad and then kind of scroll through and learn everything about the product, everything about the business, everything you need to know in one place. And that's, I guess, the difference between sending people from a TikTok to a landing page versus from a, you know, somewhere, a, a different kind of customer, like a TV ad, et cetera. Am I getting that right? Yeah. I mean, when people go to your site, so like, you know, sites are amazing, right? They're, uh, they tell you everything about the product. Now, you know, sites can be awesome. The problem is like, no matter how many different ways you write something, you're still speaking to one person. You're speaking to one problem, one person. Um, and so with landers, like right away, you know, you can have a lander for an older demo. You can have a lander for a younger demo. You can have a lander for, you know, like one of our clients is Lundberg Rice Cakes. Um, you know, they might make a lander for moms who just need to make their kids an after school snack. They might make a page for athletes or people who go to the gym. They just need a pre-workout snack. It might make a, pe- a page for people who get the munchies late at night and just need something healthy that they're not going to get, you know, uh, too full on. And so with landers, like you have all these different ways to talk about something that you can tie back to the creative it comes from as well as the channel it comes from and also the audience. And so, you know, with something like TikTok, um, you know, TikTok has got the crackhead scrolling behavior, right? So when, when you think about your site, your site's not really built for that type of behavior coming off the platform. Whereas you can build a landing page that is ready for TikTok and, you know, maybe collects first party data quicker than your site does because you know that that visitor is not going to stay too long. Um, so we try to look at like basically the channel, the audience and the creatives. Um, and then from there craft one or two different angles that, you know, somebody can choose from. But, um, but yeah, it's all about, um, you know, how do we basically make it super seamless, super easy for somebody to, to kind of like learn what this brand is selling or why it might be relevant for them. And basically I'm close to get them to a point where they can confidently say, okay, I'm going to buy this. This is for me or never mind. This is not for me. 
And what's your what's your research process? I, I find, found it to be kind of pretty extensive, but we'd love to kind of you know just hear you chat about it. Like, where are you looking for research? How do you kind of you know look at qualitative and quantitative data? And like, where where does somebody even start if they're trying to make a page and trying to do it on their own or whatever? Like, where do you even start? Yes, I mean we have I would say a, a decently extensive research research process. Um, basically, three three different touch points. So the first is after you make a purchase. Um, you know, you fill out an onboarding form. It it takes it doesn't take that long. I'd say on average it takes somebody probably thirty minutes to fill out. We ask a bunch of questions around, you know, everything can give us your assets all the way to okay, why does this brand exist? You know, give us notable press mentions, tell us where to go find the best reviews, all that kind of stuff. Then we have a, a research process internally where we build out what we call the hooks red carpet document. The red carpet document is like a six-page document. We have somebody actually go and read a top of the reviews. It's about a six-hour process per per page. Um, so reads all the reviews. Uh, actually, six hours might be uh, probably three hours, I'd say. But reads all the reviews, tries to find common benefits. You know, goes to YouTube, looks at unboxing for Miracle Bob, then goes to the comments to find what are the objections, and then figure out the answers to that. Then they'll go to Facebook ads and figure out, okay, what are the ads that are running? Where are the ads coming from? What's the messaging being pushed? Or like, what's, what are the hooks and the angles within the ads that are working well? What are competitors doing that's kind of unique or separate that's setting themselves apart? Um, you know, all the way to like, you know, we ask brands like, hey, what are your common customer customer service like complaints or objections or questions before somebody makes a purchase? And then even between the purchase and the arrival of the product, like what are the things there people get upset about, but we can help get ahead of on the page itself. Um, but essentially we try to get as much information possible to answer kind of like, what is the brand? Why does it exist? How is it going to help this person? You know, how fast are they going to get this product when they order it? What can they expect when they open their box and, um, and you know, basically get them on their way. So. Um, it's a, it's a fairly extensive research process. And then anything we don't get answered in, in those two first two, then we have our kickoff call with it. And that's kind of where we get most of it. But those questions usually are around kind of like discussing what angles we think are going to work and, um, you know, seeing, all right, is there something that the brands tested before that, that we think, and maybe they already have the data, like whether or not it's going to work or, uh, you know, we might talk through like, okay, let's, let's get deeper on like what this funnel is or what type of creative you're going to run. Or, you know, is this coming from a whitelisted account? Well, then maybe we should change how we write about the product on the page. So, um, yeah, those are probably like the three, three key pieces, um, that we go through. And, um, what, what kind of types of pages? I know there's different types and, you know, you kind of, kind of stick to a few. I've seen a different kind. Like if somebody's listening to this now and it's like their first time getting the landing page, like what are the different types of landing pages somebody should probably start with to test if they're just running traffic to a PDP right now? Um, I mean, I think the, the easiest one is like, you know, I call it the PDP flip. So product pages, you get the product pages. They're generally selling the product up top. Sometimes they have, uh, reviews at the bottom or some more of a description, and then you have the footer. Um, so the first page that I think is worth testing is like you flip that. So, you know, make the top a nice hero. Welcome, you know, th- think about like welcoming people into your store, right? So at the top, you have this banner, and it's like your sign outside your store. As soon as you start scrolling, it's it's like, you know, people are walking in the door at the store. You want to teach them, you know, why you exist, what you do, uh, what you're there to sell. And... And then as they walk through the store, then you sell them the product versus, you know, they start by seeing the product before they even walk into the store. Um, so that's one. I think listicles are an easy one. You know, mm-hmm. five reasons why, seven reasons, nine reasons. Um, I think listicles on on the PDP type pages is another good good one. I've seen um, that. I've seen that uh, that on a few. I think it's interesting, like just putting rather than like the whole copy, like kind of just a header, which is all people read anyways. But yeah. I've seen those on a few, which are really good. That that works well. Yeah, it works super well. We do a we do a mini listicle on ours, so we do like a three reasons why on our on like our like regular uh, landers. Yeah, that's smart. I remember we did a four reasons why for Milk Bar, and a lot of people ended up reading through. The other thing too is like you know once the page is built, uh, you know like uh, it's it's up to people to really like take advantage of that. So what I tell a lot of people. Is like, hey, if you're smart, you should 
um, you should tell the hooks team that not only do you want a great landing page, but tell them you want a listicle in the lander as well. And you want to compare as a chart and a listicle and a reviews module. And, uh, and then when you go and are, you know, we've developed your page, now you can duplicate that. You can cut everything except the listicle out. Now you've got a listicle that you made for free. Um, you can duplicate that and cut the listicle out and kind of the extra fluff, move the product section to the top. And now you've got a really optimized PDP that you can drive to from a listicle. And so, um, you know, it comes down to like a lot of the testing and the iterating after as well. Um, but I think with Hucks, a lot of people just get slid up. I mean, Shrey does this a lot. Like he'll bring a client, uh, we'll build them a page and then he'll use that page, you know, nine different ways. And the cost of his paid cost per page is, you know, less than 500 bucks for him. Um, oh yeah. In like a month, in like a month since we got our page, we've probably spun it out of like six or eight different variations, different yeah, products, different amazing. tests that we're running on it. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of and part so, of value. And then we're also using some of those sections on our other pages. So we're using yeah. like the review section or some of the social proof section or like the buy box on our other yep. pages and just te 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 testing like kind of a mashup of them. Yeah, I mean, I think there's so many ways to cut it. Like uh, people should pe people should really see it as like a tool and you can take that tool and cut it up in so many different ways. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, so, so you got kind of like your, your PDP flip, which makes a ton of sense. And you got your, your listicle. Those are like the top two you'd recommend somebody start with. Yeah. PDP flip, listicle, BYOD, you know, bundles are always amazing because you can sell the bundle and you can sell the individual products below if somebody doesn't want the bundle. Yeah. Those are probably the main ones, you know, for, for like apparel, you have click through pages or, or like collection style landers which are basically they, they educate you and they give you an assortment of product to click through and land on the actual PEP from. But yeah, I feel like it kind of, it kind of depends like, you know, what you're selling, what the AOV is, what that sales cycle looks like. Uh, you know, sometimes a landing page is just to collect first party data in an official land and go, you know, text them later or email them later. So it really depends like what, what the goal is. And, and also we don't just work with, consumer brands we work with like product extensions we work with agencies we work with software companies and so uh you know kind of depending on what each each of their goals are uh they might have a different version of the page but i'd say for the most part they're they're out of like a handful of different types of pages i hear you okay and then so if somebody's getting a page and they're starting to kind of think about testing and iterating what are like there there are an endless number of variables that somebody could be testing what are kind of some of the first things that somebody should be thinking about testing that would be like the highest leverage highest impact things you've seen yeah i mean headline like hero, hero headline is probably the biggest hero headline and, and imagery um you know testing different versions of social proof up, up at the top too so <laughs> Whether it's badges, whether it's stars, whether it's number of reviews, whether it's featured in, whether it's, um, uh, you know, kind of anything that brings more validity to the brand or the product itself. Um, I think the hero section is probably like the, the best place to start. And then it's Most like, people right are going to see that. Exactly. And then it's right mm -hmm. underneath the hero. So whether it's the, the why section, which I think is huge, uh, or, you know, one that we did recently, we did a listicle and, you know, I had a 48% click through rate from the listicle to the, to the PDP. I changed the first, um, the first value prop in the listicle, uh, and you know, that went up to 63%. And so mm -hmm. I think even just making minor changes in the actual, like basing in, in the main content somebody's consuming. Uh, but yeah, that's what I would do. I would also recommend like using jar or Microsoft Clarity and really just watching these sessions. That's where I get a lot of the ideas for what we're going to change is just by watching these sessions and seeing, okay, this person is spending a lot more time on this section, you know, on the third bullet point than they are on the first. Let's swap those and see if we can increase the click-through rate that way. 
Down to Chat is brought to you by Peel. I know Black Friday this year has been nuts, and I wanted to take two minutes to walk you through some of the things that we look at in Peel to understand how we did retention-wise as well as obviously acquisition-wise. This is being shared on video if you're on Spotify or YouTube. If not, you can take a look there, but I'll also try to make it as audio-friendly as I can. So first things first, we are always looking at distribution by order number um, to understand like what percentage of these customers that came in over Black Friday are first time versus second time versus third time or fourth, et cetera. So in, in our case, you can see 55% of the customers uh, were, were new customers, which is obviously amazing, but also so it's interesting to see that there are folks that have ordered six, seven, eight, nine times that are still coming back. Uh, that are still coming back on Black Friday. The next thing we look at is uh, returning customers by cohort to get a better understanding of are there spikes that we're looking at in terms of you know the second month, third month, fourth month. What you can see here is January, February, March customers had a spike in April, May, which is when we launched our foundation. But also again around Black Friday, um, which is obviously amazing to see that we're kind of reengaging these folks. Another fun dashboard we look at is year over year. So a be- having a better understanding not just on the gross sales and, and and orders, but also on AOV products sold, etc., and and you know discounting if applicable. The last interesting thing um, I love. We've spoken about audiences in the past, but this is especially interesting because we can see first time customers that came in Black Friday to get a better understanding of obviously their AOV, um, their LTV, and all that fun stuff. But we can also export this audience into Clavio to send them unique messaging or attentive to send them a text or hell even turn them into a direct mailer uh, audience of customers, which is great. The last thing, which I don't have on this loom, um, is looking at gifting. So we can kind of take a group of customers and segment the folks that have different shipping and billing, um, and then assume that they are sending gifts and maybe message them differently, which is fun um, and a different way to slice and dice, which is the name of the game. One last thing for listeners of Down to Chat, if you want to give Peel a shot, you can go to peelinsights.com forward slash more forward slash down to chat for 20% off the first three months. So again, 20% off for the first three months, go to peelinsights.com forward slash more forward slash down to chat. How do you use heat maps? What are you kind of looking for uh, to try to give you ideas for iterations? Yeah, so heat maps, I've actually stopped looking at too much. I find really? that heat maps are, are good to just understand where clicks are. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, if you have a variant selector, like if you're selling caraway, for example, and mm-hmm. you've got six different mm-hmm. colors, like that's where all your clicks are going to be. So the data is kind of irrelevant. Um, now, the second one I like to look at, which, you know, it doesn't really take much is scroll depth. So like understanding how many people went to, to each section, you know, if we can get a listicle uh, lander all the way to the bar at 40%, compl- meaning 40% of people who have, like, land. KPI. Yeah, I mean, 30, 30 is ideal. 35 okay. to 40 is uh, pretty solid. Uh, you know, that's another metric we look at. And then the third one is just, you know, I'll spend like sometimes an hour and night watching landing page sessions and just seeing what is it that people are hovering over or, you know, when somebody clicks out and leaves, like what was the last thing they saw that made them want to leave? Um, and then basically using that to just iterate on the page itself. I, I hear you. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm not. I'm no like expert at looking at them, but definitely looking at some some either heat map or like recordings. Like, and I'll even look on our PDP to see like, hey, like what is it that people aren't finding on there? Or really looking for there that we can put on our lander. Like, like how to use has been getting kind of a ton of clicks for us. Again, it's always going to depend product how to use. But yeah. even on the hooks page, the the image selector kind of like on the buy box, looking at the different images. Do you find that gets a lot of clicks? Because that's getting a ton of clicks for us. Tons. Yeah, tons of clicks there, and um, and yeah, tons of clicks on the pictures. A lot of clicks too. Uh, uh, one thing too that we we fired off from that clarity tracked really well is something called dead clicks, which is basically yeah. where where are people clicking that they think is going to take them somewhere that's not actually. That's another good insight to look at, and you know we found like for um, for a clothing brand we work with, we had you know the the image. I mean, the title, the review, stars, the price, and like a shop now button. And, you know, people were clicking the reviews, people were clicking the title, and nobody's clicking the shop now button. And, um, you know, but that difference of flipping the switch on was dramatically improved conversion or flip through for that page. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the product images get a ton of clicks. I think generally, too, like, you know, uh, as weird as this sounds, like I love watching other people on their phone, like whether it's in the subway or a coffee shop, mm-hmm. just seeing how people interact with the site. 
especially when it's like younger people and they're interacting with things like apparel or things that are high or EOV. Um, you know, most people, they just want to see like what it looks like and what it might look like on them and how it's still like fitting a little life. And I think a lot of marketers get caught up in all the other stuff. Like, all right, what are our value props we're going to hit them with? And, you know, uh, how many stars can we say we have? But in reality, a lot of these people, you know, they want to just like see the product more. They want to know what comes in the box. They want to know how big the box is when it arrives. They want to know that there's free shipping. They want to know that their order is going to ship in X number of days and shipping is going to take X amount of days to get there. They want to know that like customer service is only a click away and, you know, they're reachable at any time. It's a lot of those things that I think we also emphasize that, you know, most sites or, or previous landers that are tested uh, don't focus on. You know who does this very well? Um, Rent the Runway. If you check out their website or their app, they have photos and then they have customer photos where it's just like a dress will look great on a lot of the <laughs> different models on their site. But to see regular people wearing it, um, my wife always shows me that. She's like, okay, look, this is how it would look on a person of this shape or of this size. And it's just mm -hmm. fascinating to see it on real people versus just like on a model. Um on the second part, on the like customer education and adding all that to the P to the landing page, I think there's a ton of talk around like conversion and AOV and all that, and obviously that's amazing. But I'd imagine there's probably a ton of difference on on LTV as well. Um, if a customer comes in on a on a landing page and gets a bunch of education, learns about the brand, because most customers are going like homepage collections, product purchase, mm -hmm. they never learned about the product. Your our story is not always going to be your your big click. Um, so if they can get that all on a landing page and it's done well, I'd imagine you're, you're seeing a higher LTV as well, which is probably not the first thing that people are checking, but. Yeah, we find that the, so for a lot of our like supplement brands or, uh, high consumption, high repeat purchase brands, uh, and they found that like when they, a landing page, their, their returning customer rate is much higher for that cohort than it is for people who came, you know, otherwise, basically. Um, and I, I, it, it makes a lot of sense, right? Like if you, if you, like when we were running landers for Ant, you know, I could only imagine people think of, you know, uh, the benefits of the product when they drink it versus, oh, this is where, you know, I got 20% off and I got free shipping, uh, you know, as they take their first sip. What what uh, what destinations have you tested from landing pages? You know, so going to PDP, going straight to checkout, going to collections, anywhere else. Like, are there any kind of universalities that you're like, this is the best way to do it? And if people are just setting up, this is what they should be testing. I like that. Well, PDP is probably where a thirty percent go. I'd say sixty percent go to straight to checkout. Um, either because there's a permalink and it's a single product or like a lot of times we'll build a custom Shopify cart on the okay. landers. And so people can build like a cart and then go check out directly from the lander. Oh uh, man. And then 10% are probably like the, the optimized PDP. So like basically people will ask us to make a PDP that is insanely optimized below, you know, it's like, it's got everything from this, you know. Uh, customer service is online with a blinking green light all the way to a listicle on the PDP, tons of reviews, all the social proof you need. Uh, but it's not the site PDP. It's just like specific for performance. Um, so those are probably like the three main ones, I would say. Uh, apparel and IRVO me or, or even things that require customization, they tend to go to the PDP. Whereas things like, you know, coffee, march, uh, um, mm. vitamin. You know, those types of things will go straight to checkout. Do you ever worry or, or find like a lower AOV than you would really want going straight to checkout? Because like that's at least what, what I've tested and seen versus if we kind of go a different destination. Like, you know, it for us, us, again, it didn't harm conversion rate, but also, you know, AOV was so much lower. Or are you okay with that or have to find other ways to upsell them? What do you find? I don't think we've found or run into the AOV issue as much. Um but yeah, I don't, I don't think, I mean, no, personally, I don't think, think we'd run into that. Yeah. Okay. Got it. But it's better for conversion rate. Usually just shortening that funnel. 
Yeah, generally. I mean, a lot of times if something is high moving, like usually over a hundred or 150 bucks, then we, we build like the optimized PDP and that's where we stand the second step. So somebody comes to a lander, they learn, you know, seven reasons why if we're excited about me choose my color or choose my size, they click through and then they get to basically a PDP. It looks like a PDP on the site, but it's really just a, a super optimized lander. So it's um, a duplicate, but it's still on, it's on the site. Like it, like it's got the header and everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, interesting. It's okay. a it's a duplicate of the PVP, but it's um, it's a lot more designed to where you know the idea in general with our landers, like you should basically scroll until you're a hell yes and ready to purchase. And so yeah. with the optimized PDP, it's kind of similar. You you know, there's enough content for people to keep scrolling until they feel like they're ready. Really interesting. Okay. I, I, I want to see one of those. It was super interesting. Eli, what other questions do we have? We asked Twitter for a few. Uh, the important ones were like Nick's favorite food and, you know, kind of like what he well, would be well, doing. We'll save some time. Yeah, what we'll, he would we'll be doing if, if he wasn't in D2C and all these other fantastic ones. Uh, what other good ones? Oh, one of my favorites was what features slash widgets should absolutely 100% need to be above the fold? Yeah, that was a good one. Hey. That is a good one. On mobile, yeah. Yeah. I mean, on mobile, I think a very clear headline that articulates what somebody gets out of the product. So, for example, um, you know, it's not get get the the best anti-aging face bomb. It's, you know, feel younger 20 minutes after applying whatever, miracle bomb. Uh, so, anyways, a, a catchy headline, a catchy sub-headline that kind of explains the headline, a good CTA that's that's, um, you know, also not just the simple choose color or shot now, something that's fun. Um, mm -hmm. You know, social proof, either stars, reviews, et cetera. Ideally, some form of pricing. I found that, like, when you list the pricing at the top, um, your conversion rate is much higher than people who feel like they got tricked when they, when they click and get to the bottom. Um, and, yeah, and I think, like, product shot wise, you want to have a video product shot that genuinely shows the product in action not just like the product in a nice box not just the product that gets a nice you know background but like how does the product you know if it's a miracle bomb it might be like opening the the cabinet in your uh bathroom and seeing you right there or like you know that shot where you put your finger in and it just comes up off the side you can you can truly like it's almost like personification through the image yeah, definitely. No, that's super important. What is, here's another good question. What is the last test that you've ran or that you guys have seen that truly surprised you? So there's one, I was just kind of like messing around myself uh, with a brand and, you know, I told, I went to chat GBT and I said, you know, I use, I use a uh, copy as an example. I said, Hey, make me a listicle. Let, go read reviews across the internet. Make me a listicle that outlines the top benefits people have when drinking coffee. And so it made, you know, five reasons why. Then I said, now write this as if I'm a Trump supporter. And it was like, <laughs> it was like, you know, um, it's a non-pharmaceutical way to get energy. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's not controlled by one company. There's a lot of different companies to choose from. And then you say, you know, okay, now write this as if I'm a Biden fan. And it'll say, you know, coffee is a natural alternative to blah, blah, blah. You get much happy and there's mental health benefits, all this and that. And so I started like kind of putting together pages and just basically testing them against each other. Um, surprisingly, the, the Trump version of copy, um, you know, had like a two times higher foot through rate than the Biden version of copy from chat GPT. That makes and sense. That, Trump's a lot more polarizing. Yeah, yeah. And I think also that, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, I don't want people to get the wrong idea here, but I think that was a test that genuinely surprised me. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. Maybe we should, you know, election season's coming out. Maybe we should start to cater some of our copy to, to different mm -hmm. sides and see if that increases conversion rate. I mean, Nick, uh, Death Wish Coffee built an entire business on that. Yeah, same with Black Rifle Coffee. Right. You know what else? I don't know if you guys heard this on on my first million, but um, 
what's the guy? Is it Ben Shapiro? His thing, they, they built out like, uh, oh, like Jeremy's yeah. razors or something. And like their yeah. whole thing is like, it's like Harry's, but for Republicans pretty much. Have you seen their Twitter <laughs> yeah. ads? I've seen a few of their Twitter ads. I have not No, I'm not in their demo. They're, they're yeah. I am not either. I don't know why <laughs> Elon, you got to fix your targeting. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely not, but, uh, yeah, I guess some, something I was engaging with kind of makes something, but like, they're very polarizing with it. And again, nothing about their politics, but it, it works for them. And they, they pull it off and like the messaging is super strong and talk about a good hook. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, I think I, I always think it comes down to like, uh, what I call the trace model. It's basically technology reporting, audience creating experience. Those are like the five things you got to dial in. And, you know, if you have the right tech, if you have the right reporting to know what to look for and what's working, if you have the right audience that you're going after, you match that to the creative and you match that to the site experience, um, you know, you'll always be golden. Love it. Love it. All right. I think we got a few questions, non-landing page questions that I think we can get to that Eli wants to ask. Eli wants to ask. This is the internet's question. The ins- the internet needed to know like George Clooney questions and a whole bunch of crazy shit. But um, I think the the fun one, just like knowing Nick is the D to C guy, is if he was complete. I think Ron asked uh, from Avi if he was banned from D to C, which I think is good framing. Like if he was like, okay, you are not allowed to work in D to C ever again. Uh, what would you be doing? I mean, probably definitely still something on the internet if that's allowed. If that's not allowed, I'd probably be a pilot or a teacher or something. <laughs> um, but otherwise, probably something on the internet, a publishing business, media publishing, something like that. This what is, is your favorite Indian dish? Chicken tikka masala and garlic naan, mango lassi. I mean, you can't go wrong there. What You got to pick one, though. Chicken tikka masala. All right. Iconic. Uh, anything what else? else? Any, I mean, wh- the, the rest of the stuff we kind of covered, like why did you start Hooks? Um, they were doing that as part of the the Sharma Brands uh, side of the business. Uh, I mean, can a, <laughs> this is kind of chaotic. Can a landing page be as smooth as George Clooney's voice? I mean, I I like I just like the description there. I, I don't I don't see why not. Any any reasons yeah, why I not? I mean, with the right, I think with the right copywriting, it totally can be. I would say a, a lot of pages get messed up because, uh, so I do for me, the brand, I'll be like, you know, Hey, by the way, just so you know, you know, we've tested landing pages, they don't work. And, you know, then it's like, okay, well, send us the pages you tested. And, uh, you know, it's like, they're selling coffee. It's like coffee, zero calories. It's got zero sugar, zero calories. There's no sweeteners. It's the best ingredients you can find. And, um, you know, it's freshly roasted. All things that don't matter at all to somebody who's actually just looking for a cup of coffee and convenience. And so, um, I would say a lot of the a lot of the reasons that people's landers fail is because um, you know they're drinking their they don't know how to speak about their product to somebody who's never heard of it before. Which is why I love diving into reviews. Those are generally people where you know most review cycles are they're writing in like. I don't know, a week or 10 days after they make their purchase and they're trying for the first time. And so the reviews are like where the real goal is at. Um, anyways, I forgot the original intent of this question or if <laughs> there even was one, but uh, yeah. drinking your own and trying to make landing page is a horrible recipe. Why don't you think more brands are using landing page? Because like everyone, especially if you're on Twitter, everyone's like, oh, landing okay. pages are, are key. You got, you got to run landing pages. We run them. Yeah. I, I personally would not run traffic to a PDP anymore because we've tested it. And it's, like you said, it's just much better landing pages. But still, if you look at Facebook ad library and you look at most brands, the majority of traffic is still going to a PDP. Why do you think that is? They just don't know. They haven't found success. What, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I think it's a couple of things. One is, uh, one is just like lack of resources. Some people just don't have. Like, you know, a landing page is not that simple and straightforward, right? Every every single image on a landing page has been perfectly cut to be uploaded that way. Um, you know, if you're, if, if you build a page, like it's easy to edit once you have a template, but then trying to remake a template or add elements can be a lot more tricky and challenging. And I think that's where a lot of the innovation stops. Generally too, when most people build landing pages with agencies, uh, like retainer-based agencies, they don't actually get the source file. They're, they're, it's usually built on a separate web app. They get the URL, but yeah. they can't really make changes. And so that was one of the big reasons of the folks we said, okay, well, we're just going to give you the source file. 
Factor, whether it's an Unbow, Shopify, Drupal, you know, whatever it may be. And you can go and edit it, duplicate it, do anything you want. But um, the problem is like, you know, somebody runs a lander, it runs its course for three weeks, and then it stops performing. And then they don't have the ability to just quickly duplicate that and spin up a new one. The other reason that people don't run landers is like, you know, kind of like you, they're just busy. They're already busy with like 10 other things and, you know, HR things or hiring new people. Like that takes a higher priority than, okay, uh, Cody's going to sit here for four hours and try to build a landing page and stuff. Plus I'm just like a terrible use of, you know, your time. And it's what the, I did like last Friday and I, or, I did it like, I actually did it over the weekend just because I enjoy doing it. I'm fucking terrible at it. It's like the least yeah. efficient thing for me to do. It's just fun to try to do, but I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, I think most people, like what, what we've seen is um, most people who come to Hoax, they know they need landing pages. It's just that they don't have the ability to make it. And so, mm -hmm. and a lot of brands too, they don't have designers on staff. They don't have developers on staff. And so like, it's not really set up in the way that they work. So coming to Hoax, it's just like, okay, buy a page and, you know, we'll do everything. Pretty easy. All right, cool. One final question. So if somebody wants to get started, wants, wants a page, what do they do? Where, where can they go? Uh, just go to hooks.co, H O X dot C O and request a demo. We'll get on the phone and we'll talk about what kind of page we can build you and maybe we'll give you a rich this. I was going to say like, I can't, I can't believe there's no forward slash down to chat or something like that. Like free chicken Tico with your first landing page build. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. I love it, man. Thank, thank you so much for going on. We know you're a super busy man, so really appreciate of course. having you on for the second time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Thank you all. All right. Thanks, Nick.